In this recording, we look at the background to the method of differentiation by first principles. When we're looking at differentiation, we want to find the derivative of a function. For instance, if y was expressed as f of x, we want to find the derivative of y with respect to x. And the interpretation of the derivative is it is the rate of change of y with respect to x. And another way you can think about this visually is that at a given point on the curve, the derivative of y with respect to x is the gradient of the tangent to the curve at that point. And it's thinking about that visual interpretation that the derivative is a gradient of the tangent to a curve at a given point that can help us understand the method of differentiation by first principles. So let's consider a curve represented by the function y equals f of x. I'm just drawing any old curve here to show this example. And I've just labelled the axes here as well now, x and y. Now given point p on that curve will have coordinates x, y. Or you could also think of the coordinates as x and f of x. And let's now suppose we also consider a second point on the curve called q, where q is a small distance h away from the point p horizontally. Now what would that mean the coordinates of q are? Well, x coordinate is to do with the horizontal coordinate. So if q is h units away from p horizontally, let's suppose it's h units to the right of p, then the x coordinate would be x plus h. And the y coordinate would be the value of the function for x plus h. That is, the y coordinate would be f of x plus h. So I've just redrawn the diagram a bit bigger here with, of the curve just in isolation with the points p and q on it. And let's consider a line that goes from the point p to the point q. That is, it will be a line like the one I've just drawn in blue. What would the gradient of that line be? Well, when we work out the gradient of a straight line, it's always y2 minus y1. That is the difference between the y coordinates of the two points on the line divided by x2 minus x1, the difference of their x coordinates. And we remember that p has coordinates x, f of x. q has coordinates x plus h, f of x plus h. Therefore, in this case, the gradient of this line between those two points will be y coordinate f of x plus h, say, minus the y coordinate here, f of x divided by x coordinate, x plus h, minus the x coordinate of p that I've just called x here. Can that simplify? Not all that much really. Can't really simplify the numerator since we just have general expressions for the functions here. But the denominator, x plus h minus x, the x minus x just gives zero, so that that's divided by h. And as I said, that's the gradient of the line between these two points, P and Q, that lie on the curve, y equals f of x. But now, let's imagine P is a fixed point on the curve, but let's imagine h getting smaller, and what would happen if the point Q was closer to P? Because as h gets smaller, or closer to zero, then the point Q would get closer and closer to P. And what would actually happen then is the gradient of the line from P to the point Q that's near it, that would approach the gradient of the tangent to the curve at our point P. Remembering that when we're talking about the tangent to a curve, what we're talking about is a line that touches the curve at the point. 
So as we get h closer and closer to zero, the gradient of the line will be closer and closer to the gradient of the tangent to the curve. And that means if we think about taking the limit as h approaches zero, that would actually give us a way of working out the gradient of the tangent to the curve at point p. And we said before that the gradient of a tangent to the curve is one way of interpreting the derivative of the function at a given point. Therefore, this formula here, the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h is one method for calculating the derivative of the function f dash x. And when this method is used to calculate the derivative, this is called using differentiation by first principles. And you might want to look at our other maths casts on this topic where we go through several examples of actually calculating derivatives using this method in practice.